Hello and welcome to today's episode of Reverend Folklore Reviews. This is Tyler, and today we'll be taking a look at The Birth of Violence by Chelsea Wolfe. I believe I first met Chelsea around 2006 or so when I was moving from California back into Oregon. At this time she was fronting a punk band that I honestly can't remember the name of, but she was also doing her solo material at the same time. I played some shows with her in the Northwest and she had crashed at my house and played songs in my living room a couple times. I lost track of her and her career for a while until my well, now brother-in-law, uh, Peter asked me, Hey, have you ever heard of Chelsea Wolfe? And uh, I didn't know how on earth he had heard of her. Um, you know, since he was from the Midwest and a bit younger. Um, and a while later, I heard a review of one of her albums on NPR and just thought to myself that maybe she had gotten kind of big. Since then, I've picked up some of her other albums, like uh, Pain is Beauty, um, The Abyss, His Spun, and I notice she's embraced more of a gothic and uh, sometimes industrial sound. Also adopted a really strong visual presentation to match that. So I was looking around, uh, seeing what's come out recently, seeing if there's anything that caught my interest that I might possibly want to review, and I noticed that Chelsea just put out a new album last week. On my way home this morning, I stopped by Music Millennium here in Portland and picked up a copy and gave it a listen. And though I'm not still completely caught up on uh, material from her back catalog, this album sounds a lot more to me like what I remember Chelsea's stuff sounding like from several years ago. Birth of Violence is an 11-track album that clocks in at around 43 minutes. Um, the album starts with a song called Mother of the Road. The uh, sound of strings come in, uh, quickly followed by Chelsea's vocals and an acoustic guitar strumming. The tribal-sounding thump of a tom drum comes in and gives the song a real feeling of movement. Um, as though maybe you were driving down a desert highway somewhere in the southwest. And the song nicely transitions into a song called American Darkness. Uh, to me, American Darkness has the feel of just catching bits of sunlight while passing through a thick grove of trees and um, kind of has the sticky, sweet feel of southern air to it. It has just a little bit of a mysterious and men melancholic and sensual tone to it, um, both in the sound and a bit in the lyrics of the song, too. After that is the understated title track of the album, Birth of Violence. It's one of the quietest songs on the album, but still manages to bring to mind various types of threatening imagery. After that is a song called Deranged for Rock and Roll. It's one of the singles from the album, and it has just this little bit of... It has this fuzzed out electric guitar on it that still manages to be really subtle. Uh, it also has these great drum sounds in it. Next up is a song called Be All Things, and this song is definitely one of my favorites on the album, if not my favorite. Um, it's a really well arranged song, has some great string parts on it that kind of ebb and flow together with Chelsea's vocals in such a way that I can't help but think about like landscapes. I, I imagine standing on a craggy rock on a, on a gray day and just uh, feeling a coastal wind and feeling of uh, a salt spray of uh, waves breaking on the rocks on my skin. Um, it's, a, it's a really good song. There's also a video for this song. It's a pretty good video. It's uh, nothing like the video that was in my head, but, you know, it, it's still okay. 
The next song is uh, not all that memorable in my book. It has some interesting string and synthesizer textures. Not, not a bad song, but doesn't really stand out all that much. When Anger Turns to Honey sort of reminds me of something you might hear on one of the quieter albums from Goldfrap. And I can say that about the song after it too, to an extent. Uh, the song Dirt Universe kind of has a little bit of a acoustic gold frap feel to me. I'm not counting that as a bad thing at all. Uh, I myself have taken some stabs at trying to be gold frap. Nothing wrong there. Little Grave is a little bit unsettling and kind of a ghostly sounding song. It, to me it seems to be contrasting the natural order of birth and death with a life that is prematurely cut short. Um, and though it's not exactly clear, it uh, may be about gun death, uh, may possibly the death of a child, and has a chorus that uh, says, just says, sunrise, sunset, which of course reminds me of Fiddler on the Roof. Um, kind of a sad and slightly eerie song, but definitely uh, memorable. After that is Preface of a Dream Play. It's a song that seems to be about remembering more innocent times or more innocent days and awakening to the cruelty of life. You know, just uh, stuff like that. Last on the album is a song simply called Highway. Um, it reminds me and possibly intentionally um, reminds me, after I took a look at the lyrics, of the David Lynch film Lost Highway. Um, it sort of brings things full circle from the opening song to me. The first song was Mother Road, the song's Highway, and the, it kind of ties the whole album together a bit for me, um, where the album seems to invoke a lot of scenery and a lot of snapshots of people and just bits of life, but it all has this kind of emotion and all of this kind of vague... A uh, fever dream feel to it. Now, I'll take this opportunity to mention kind of my first impressions of the album and what I thought it would be. After listening to her last couple albums, um, like Abyss and His Spun, and then I go to a record store this morning and I see this cover, which I don't know how well you can actually see the details in it, but she's wearing this amazing black outfit. Um, she seems to be she's holding a knife or maybe some kind of ceremonial dagger. You probably can't see this because it's pretty small even up close, but she's wearing these uh, leather bracers of what appear to be nails sticking out of it. So I was kind of wondering if uh, Chelsea finally went full Dark Throne and uh, just did a whole death metal record. So when I actually put it in and listened to it, I was uh, surprised and pleasantly surprised that um, it kind of maybe subverted my expectations a little bit. Uh, I take a look inside here and uh, there's this great panoramic photo here inside and if you go in here it uh, has an insert as a booklet that uh, has lyrics but uh, I'll talk about that more in just a second. So overall, Birth of Violence has a little more of a stripped-down, um, kind of earthy, naturalistic feel to it. Still has the darker undertones, still has the good production value of her more recent material, um, but it feels a bit more toned down with the acoustic arrangements that I think kind of let Chelsea's melodies and her voice uh, shine through a little bit more. The album also seems like a bit of a nice change of pace, going a little bit different direction than the last album, His Spun, took. Um, I feel like His Spun kind of took things pretty far in the heavier, doomier direction, so it's kind of nice to have um, an album that kind of 
goes a little bit different direction, but still feels complementary to that. I really like that this album has a consistent feel and tone to it all the way through, and one song moves into another quite nicely. Criticisms of this album. Kind of a minor one, but it's the effects on the vocals. Though what they did makes the song sound extra warm and ethereal, um, makes it a little bit hard for me to follow the lyrics from time to time. I found myself frequently wanting to take a look at the lyrics in the insert, and again, thankfully, this album came with lyrics in the insert, but unfortunately, the lyrics were very hard to read in the insert, just a combination of the font they chose and the way it was printed, and it's very small, but the printing and the font make it very difficult to actually read what's in the insert, so I think that's an unfortunate little misstep there. Uh, if you're going to bother to have lyrics on the insert, it'd be nice to be able to uh, read them a little more easily. And maybe my hearing's just bad, which it is, but I kind of wish the vocals would have been made a little bit cleaner in the mix. So with the softer, little bit warmer tone of Birth of Violence, I think this album would probably be a pretty good jumping on point uh, if you were just getting into Chelsea's music and want an album to start with. But I think it does it in such a way that it's not going to alienate anyone who jumped aboard listening to Chelsea's music over the past couple of years with the past couple of releases. If you are a person who wants music that plays out like an American road trip fever dream, uh, give this one a listen. Thanks again for joining us. I think that's all I have to say about this record for now. But uh, I will leave some links in the uh, About section below. Um, also, please feel free to like. Um, if you have things to say, uh, you can say them, and I give you permission to say them in the comments section. Also, uh, subscribing helps out a lot. So uh, until next time, uh, thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful whatever time of day it is. Thanks.